The fruit of the womb is a reward like the arrows in the hands of the warriors. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is a man who has his quiver full of them. Our children are going to children's church, and we're so glad they're here today in Jesus' name. So this morning, we're going to pick up talking about Achilles, a sermon series about your spiritual blind spots. Let me, let me pause just a minute and tell you how tickled I am. I have found, and you'll see it online, and you'll see it in your worship brochure next week, I have found a 100-year-old World War II veteran who retired from the Navy and became a pastor who's willing to come and speak, and I found another World War II veteran. So I want you to get. Ex I want you to invite your children, your grandchildren, even some children you might like occasionally, because there's not a lot of those men and women left around. He went in as if you were ever in the military. He went in as an E1 and made it to the commander of a ship in the Navy, which commander is O5. So he went from E1 to O5 in 25 years. Um, and his name is Commander Jernigan, but he got out and pastored for 20 or 30 years after he got out of the Navy. So I'm just as tickled as I can be. I'm, I'm thinking about what's coming up in November. Normally in November, I preach and teach on stewardship. So if you've ever wondered, why doesn't Ken talk about what the Bible says about money and material gain? I do it once a year. I hit it hot and I hit it heavy. So if you invite somebody, do not invite them during November. Because I don't want them to say that all that preacher does is talk about money. Yeah, during the, during the month of November, I will. I'll talk about it all month. But I'm going to teach you what the Bible says about it, and that's between you and the Lord. But we're going to continue Achilles. Stewardship's coming up. But also, we're going to have that World War II veteran to interview at the end of November. I tried to get him November 10th for Veterans Day. But the first church in Mount Olive already had him. But he said he'll come on the 24th. So I'm really excited about that. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We've been talking about your spiritual blind spot. And how many of y'all know you all have a blind spot? Let me try it again. You all have a blind spot. We all have a blind spot. I cannot, let's see, I've been driving legally. I'm trying to figure out how many years I've been, because how many of y'all grew up the way I did? Somebody said, you get in that truck, you take it over there. It didn't matter whether you had a license or not, you just did it, right? So, I've been driving legally somewhere around 32, 20, whatever. Whoever's good at math, I'm, <laughs> I'm 48 and 16, so whatever that is. Um, that's how long I've been driving. And it still never ceases to amaze me. I'll come to an intersection and look and go to pull out, and a car will come flying by. And what happened? That car did not appear out of nowhere, right? It was in my blind spot, Miss Terry. So now... I'm not old, but I'm older than I've ever been, and I've had enough of those huh, moments that now I look two or three times, right? Because how many of y'all figured out that don't matter how much insurance you have, they're not going to replace what you got the way you got it, right? And all the other stuff that goes along with that. You don't want anybody to get hurt. You don't want all the, the stuff. So everybody has a blind spot, and you have a blind spot spiritually just like you have a blind spot Physically, First Thessalonians, Paul is is where we kind of left off, but because I want you to understand, we've we've talked about your thoughts, what goes on between your ears, and your influences are what are part could be an Achilles heel. If you're exposed to something long enough, your conscience can be swayed and calloused enough to think it's no longer wrong, because even even if things don't bother you, it does not mean it should not bother you. Just because things do not bother you does not mean they should not bother you. If you're not sure, examine. If you write in your Bibles, you should write, this is my microscope. This is my microscope. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, but examine everything how? Carefully. Carefully. I have, I have heard when they train FBI agents to look for counterfeit money, they do not show them how many different counterfeits have been made. How do they train them? They know the real thing upside down, backwards, around, forward, to the left, to the right. They examine the real thing carefully to the point that they can walk by and go, that ain't real. And they don't know exactly how they don't know, but they just know that they know that that ain't real. And Paul says, for your spiritual life, examine everything 
carefully. Somebody's locked out and knocking on the back door. Will somebody help me? I thought I heard somebody back there. Oh, okay. All right. Simon says don't do that. Okay. Examine everything. Thank y'all so much for trying. Examine. I forgot the children can knock on that wall and you can hear it. Forgive me. Examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold on to that which is good. Abstain from what kinds of evil? Every form of evil. Examine, hold fast, and abstain. It's like I said, if you write in your Bible, you should write, this is my microscope. Here's the question I didn't want to ask myself. Are you ready for me to ask you? Raise your hand. Am I being entertained by the sins Jesus died for? Am I being entertained and enjoy the performance of the sins that Christ died to forgive me of? Funny or enjoyable do not make it right or wrong. It's wrong because it glamorizes the sins that Jesus died for. So when people say to me, I'm a Christian and I don't need the church, that tells me that you've not read the Bible. Because you need church. You know how I know? Because you are a clay pot and you leak. And all week long, junk is being poured into you. And even if you just there's just a few drops of junk and you go, no, 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 leave that junk off of me. There's so many drops over the week, you need to get a refilling of what the Word of God wants to teach you. You don't have to go to church as a Christian. You absolutely get to. You know how many people are dying in on this planet right now just because they attend an underground church service. Now, let me tell you how dumb I am, Melvin. It took me way too long to figure out they were not digging holes and having church under the ground. Okay? So underground does not mean they're going under the ground to do it. That means they're... I've heard these stories. In China, they'll pray... All their pastors have taken biblical names because if you're caught in a church service, they will torture you until you tell them the name of your pastor. And all they can tell them is, my pastor's name is Paul, my pastor's name is Peter, my pastor's name is James. So that way they don't have to lie. They're not going to lie, but they also don't get the pastor in trouble. And people will pray for hours and feel like the Lord is telling me to show up in this field. There's a tree out there and the pastor will be there. And they'll show up and two or three people will have church and then they'll just go home. And next week they'll pray and the Lord will tell them to go somewhere else and that's where they'll have church. And people can't find us here. Does it glamorize the sins that Jesus died for? Ask yourself, is this pleasing to God? Because, listen to me carefully, don't take this the wrong way. God is not your fishing buddy. And the Bible says you can be a friend to God, but he is not your friend like that. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, but you don't treat him casually. You don't give God high fives. He is almighty God, creator. He is holy, and we are called to live in such a way that brings glory and honor to Him. If it does not, if it does not please my master, I want you to start using that in your vocabulary as a Christian. Not, will this please the Lord? A stronger word in our culture, which is synonymous with Lord, is will this please my master? Because we like to think that we're in charge. Okay, I'm getting ready to make a whole bunch of people mad. Raise your hand if I can make you mad. <clears throat> As Amer- you promise, right? As Americans, you think you have a say in Christianity. For 250 or so, 300 years, we fought, bled, died, sacrificed to give us the ability to vote and have a say about everything, Right? And that's why you should pray before you vote. You really should. Don't don't take it for granted what people have sacrificed. But you are not an American first. If you are a Christian, you are a Christian first. And if you read your Bible, and you should. I should smile when I say this, Miss Kathy. When you read your Bible, you find out that if he is your Lord, he is your master. 
which means you are a doulos. I've talked about this some. You are a slave to the master, and I don't know any slaves that get a say in what they do. Now, do people vote in churches? They vote with their feet, and they vote with their money. They vote with their feet, and they vote with their money. You may never raise your hand and say, I'm for that or against it, but if you don't show up and give to it, you've told me you're against it. But we as Americans think when the Lord tells us, y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all, y'all are just not ready. When we pray, that's one of the reasons why we don't pray is because we don't want the Lord telling us what to do. And we're going to do what we want to do. And we don't want to fight with God, so we just don't talk to him. Because if the Lord tells us to do something and we don't want to do it, we say, I'm not going to do that. So he's not your master. He is your genie. Do you truly serve him or do you serve him out of convenience? Ask yourself, is this, does this please my master? If it does not, I should not be involved in it. Because if you understand, if you read your Bible, you find out that Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Anybody here from England? Okay, it's very difficult for us to wrap our minds around it in our culture. But in England, when the, I can't remember what that thing's called. There's this ugly chair that when the queen has to, what? When the, queen has, when the queen's going to make an official decision, well, I mean, she ain't going to make one anymore. When the, um, the king makes an official decision, he sits down in this ugly chair that's like from the 1300s, and they put all his, his bells and whistles on, and when, he's hold, when he says something, guess what the nation does? Everything's that the king says. No one in England says, well, I'm not for that, so I ain't going to do it. They are servants in a kingdom, and when the king says something in a kingdom, guess what you have to do as his servant? You don't get a vote. It's, I tell you something you can identify with. Many of you were raised the way I was. You can do what your mom and daddy tell you to do, or you can get a whooping and do what your mom and daddy tell you to do, but you're going to do what they told you to do, right? Okay, so maybe y'all can identify with that. Does this please my master because I do not own anything? Just think about all the things that were so awesome 10 years ago that are worthless today. Did you know, did you know that salt... Table salt used to be so valuable, we get the word salary from the Greek word for salt because Roman soldiers by that time were paid in salt because it helped preserve their food. That's how valuable that was 2,000 years ago. But you get takeout today, and you get a, most of the time you get a little pack, don't you? It's got a, a, a napkin that you can't do nothing with. It's got a knife, fork, and a spoon you can't do anything with. But most of the time, it's got a thimble full of pepper and salt. So the very thing that people thousands of years ago fought, bled, and died for, access to salt, is now common and treated as, as nothing. We have cabinetfuls of it in little containers. When we have a dinner, we'll put it out. Nobody steals it. Well, I don't think anybody steals. Most people don't steal salt shakers anymore. But that used to be very valuable. Let us, not, let us not misunderstand. If this does not please the master, I should not be involved in it. Ask yourself this question. Does this lure me away from Christ or draw me closer to Christ? I've told you I'm not real smart. Okay? Let me give you another example. For years, uh, okay, this has changed, by the way. This has changed. For years, you used to be able to fish in the county you lived with live bait for free without a license. That has changed. So you, you do what you want to do, but when GW rolls up on you, and you better tell him the truth because you don't want to get sideways with the game warden. But for years, that's how you could fish, and that's how I got away with it because you could fish for free with live bait in the county you lived in. I never bought any artificial lures. I never bought uh, any, any equipment other than a fishing pole, uh, just the basic stuff. And, and all I caught were brim and sunfish. It depends on what part of the country you're from. You call them different things. But y'all know what I'm talking about. A brim, just a little bitty fish, fun, you know, pull some cork and throw it back. But you know what I learned, Miss Jennifer? I went and got my fishing license, and I thought I was like Leroy Brown. I was a bad dude, right? 
And I had one, Jeff, one fishing lure, one. And I had cut the hooks off it a long time ago. I'll tell you later why. And I, I put hooks on it. And, Jonathan, I just sat where there was some water, and I thought there was some fish in there. And I just kept throwing and reeling in, throwing and reeling in, throwing and reeling in. I thought, I want a bobber. This ain't fun. <laughs> I kept throwing, I kept throwing. And all of a sudden, any of y'all, any y'all, ever, any of y'all ever caught a largemouth bass? I'm just reeling, and all of a sudden, bam! He hits that thing, and I'm like, whoo, now I know why bass fishermen like to fish for bass. But it's just, I learned that day, Miss Jennifer. You know what? I've never caught a bass with a bobber and live bait. I needed the right, are you ready for the word? I needed the right lure to catch something different. Are you being lured away from Christ, or are you being drawn closer to Christ? This illustration deserves to be said again. You lock me up in a room with the most expensive, popular alcohol there is, and the only problem I'm going to have is how do I get out of this room and I want something to eat. It does not tempt me at all. But if somehow you lock me up in the Krispy Kreme with that hot sign and that, that belt just continuously going, that is a different story. Y'all, not, Come on, you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? There are some things that would lure me more than others. Y'all ain't listening to me. What is luring you away from Christ or does it draw you closer to Christ? Many of the things we consume are out of ignorance or because we're so calloused, we've lost focus on what we should be consuming and what is appropriate for our soul. Are you being lured or are you drawing closer? How different would your life be if you allow the Holy Spirit to convict you of what you consume and you spend the same amount of time reading God's Word, ministering to your spouse and children, serving at the local church, not in a legalistic way, but in freedom to please God? Let me say that again because y'all have never seen Grant leave the sanctuary before. How different would your life be if you allow the Holy Spirit to convict you of what you consume and you spend the same amount of time reading the Word of God, ministering to your spouse and children? Let me pause right there. If you are married and you are a Christian, what you do to your spouse and children is ministry. You are called to minister to them. Serving at your local church, not in a legalistic way, but in freedom to please the master. One of the many reasons we seek to fill our lives with the influence of entertainment is because we're looking for entertainment or pleasure or possessions to fill the void that only the saving grace of God can fill. But we are easily drawn away from God because we're all sinners and believe this time it will be different. This thing will please me, but it does not, and it will not. Is your Achilles heel your influences? I want to transition. We've talked about thought life. We've talked about your thoughts. We've thought about your influences. And now I want to talk about another Achilles heel in your life, that is relationships. Perhaps you have an Achilles heel of relationships in your life. I believe I can prove this biblically. But your life is always moving in the direction of the three or four people you hang around the most. Have you ever noticed mean people hang around with mean people? Have you ever noticed negative people hang around with negative people? Have you ever noticed, are you ready? Are you ready? Wealthy people hang around with wealthy people. That's why I'm going to talk about this in the stewardship lesson. I'm just throwing it out here for free. If I'm Poe, I can't even afford OR, Veronica. I'm just Poe. If I'm Poe and you Poe, we know how to do Poe. We got Poe down. I know how to do Poe. I'm going to keep my mouth shut and try to hang around with people that's got something and see what they do different because what I'm doing is I'm not getting anywhere. Huh? You would not believe, I'm not going to preach about stewardship, but you would not believe the people that come to my office. I don't know what to do, but I sit down and I show them you're spending $150 on satellite TV. You watch two shows on. You're spending $300 on cell phones so you have a tablet with a hotspot attached to it so you can play anywhere you want to besides your telephone on the iPad because it's more convenient for you. You're spending $72 a month on Mocha Chuckle Lockers. You're, you're doing all these different things. You, you can live without some of that stuff. You continuously buy depreciating assets. 
Well, that's a 50 cent word, Kim. What does that mean? That means every time you get tired of a car, you trade it in because you got a good deal. Let me be a spoiler alert. You did not get a good deal. The only person who got a good deal was the car lot. Other than your house, your car is the most expensive thing you'll ever buy, and it depreciates in value. So if you hang around people who trade cars all the time, guess what you're probably going to do? And you're going to be broke. The only person who's going to get rich is going to be the car dealership. And you're going to say ridiculous things. I promise I'm going to preach about this. You say ridiculous things like, but my payment went down $20. So you took a car you paid three years on, you had two years left, and you traded it in, and the negative equity went on top of the new car, but after all the rebates and sales and money back, your payment went down $20, but what you did was you added three more years on top of the three you'd already paid, and plus the negative equity. Do the math, right? Do the math. What are your relationships like? Who do you hang around, and who do you allow to hang around you? Because your life is moving in the direction, they can because your relationships can be great spiritual assets or they can be a spiritual curse. It's your decision. I'm going to close with this story. Mark chapter 2. When he had come back to Capernaum, no, I'm, I'm not going to get into that today. I'm going to close right now. Relationships. When we get back together, we're going to talk about the Achilles heel of relationships. And let me give you, let me just give you something to chew on. Mark chapter 2. I'm going to read it next week. It's when there was such a crowd that people couldn't get to Jesus and four friends had a sick friend that they couldn't get to him. They tore the roof off to lower him down in front of Jesus. All of us need four crazy friends. The right kind of crazy. All of us need friends that are Christians. If you're a Christian, that you call and say, all hell's broke loose in my life. Will you help me pray? And they don't spread it as unofficial prayer requests to everybody in the church. That they actually pray. Perhaps your Achilles heel is your relationship. So my challenge to you today. What relationships do you have around you? Do they build your faith or they tear it down? Do they influence you for godliness and holiness or they influence you towards worldliness? You know what mama said, David? You lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. And mama was quoting the Bible, you didn't even know it when she said, birds of a feather flock together. How many of you were told when you live out of this house, don't for you forget who you are, right? And thankfully, that worked with our children. You would not believe the amount of people come up to me and said, your children are so nice and so well-behaved. And I go, well, good. At least out in public they are. Any parent ever felt like that? <laughs> I wonder if the Heavenly Father feels like way about you. Stand with me today. Bow your heads. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, I would appreciate um, covet your prayers. Sandy K has an appointment. I'm cutting service just a few minutes short. Sandy K has an appointment in Atlanta, Georgia tomorrow morning, so we're leaving after church to go to Atlanta. We'll be back Tuesday morning. Um, so uh, let's, let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, forgive us of our Achilles heel of our thought life. Forgive us of our Achilles heel of bad influences. And, Father, let us ask ourselves, how can we be influenced for the good of the kingdom and not be lured away? Father, help our relationships touch and move in our situations and circumstances. Father, thank you, God, for raising up godly men and godly women as we pray and believe you, Lord, to help us and lead us in the right paths for your name's sake. Thank you, Father, for many women of God around us who help encourage us. And if there's somebody here today that doesn't know Christ and you'd like to receive him before you go, I'd love to meet you at the front. Is there anybody here before we go today? Then I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he give you grace and peace and bring you back to the next appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake hands with two or three people and sign up for Trunk or Treat.